Hi, I'm Elise, this is Witch Way, and in this video, I'll be taking you through the witch lore of The Crucible. Released in 1996, this historical drama stars Charlene Woodard as Tituba, Winona Ryder as Abigail Williams, Bruce Davison as Reverend Paris, Daniel Day-Lewis as John Proctor, Paul Schofield as Judge Danforth, and many more. Set in the town of Salem in 1692, the town reverend stumbles across a group of girls casting spells in the woods and recognises one as his niece. The next day, his daughter will not rise from bed. Questioning his niece, she accuses the slave Tituba of leading the ritual. The reverend tries to beat a confession out of Tituba and she too accuses another to save herself. And so it continues with Abigail leading the charge and accusing others in the town, including the wife of John Proctor, as she hopes this will bring him into her arms. John and other townsfolk try to stem the flow of hysteria, but also become swept up in the accusations. <laughs> You might be thinking this is based off the Salem Witch Trials, right? Wrong! It's based off the play The Crucible by Arthur Miller, which itself is based off of the Salem Witch Trials. The Salem Witch Trials ran from 1692 to 1693, and in the film, the accusations occur when a girl cannot wake from her sleep, and Putnam, the mother of one of the girls, is convinced it's witchcraft. I think it's ironic that Frances Conroy played this part as she would later go on to portray a witch herself as Myrtle Snow in American Horror Story Coven. And of course you can check out my witch lore review for more on that one. This happens to take place just after the women are seen gathering in the woods with the slave Tituba casting spells for love. One of them is very hopeful as it would have to incorporate necromancy. Matthew Hopkins was 50 years dead by this time, and of course he is the self-proclaimed Witchfinder General. But back to Tituba. There have been theories that Tituba may have entertained a few in Salem with some of her indigenous practices, though this is never mentioned in the court records. Charlene Woodard, who portrayed Tituba, also appears in the Mayfair Witches series as Dolly Jean Mayfair. Tituba is beaten to confess and, to save herself, accuses Sarah Good and Sarah Osborne. This actually happened and these women were indeed the first to be accused of witchcraft, kicking off the hysteria of the Salem Witch Trials. We do not see Good much after this, but we see Osborne being hanged. Sarah Osborne actually died in prison following her arrest as did several others. In the film and in the Salem Witch Trials, Elizabeth Proctor is accused and imprisoned, but her execution is stayed due to her pregnancy. And she was one of the lucky ones. She was eventually pardoned, escaping the gallows. This wasn't the case for other unfortunates. Many of the accused that were executed during the Salem Witch Trials are indeed named in this film. Rebecca Nurse, George Jacobs, Mary Eastie, John Willard, Martha Corey, Elizabeth Howe, John Proctor, Bridget Bishop. This is just a few of the names, as 19 in total were executed as hanging and, as we see in the film, one, Giles Corey, was pressed to death for not entering a plea to his accusations. Ironically, Peter Vaughan portrayed the judge who passed down this torture in the 1981 adaptation of The Crucible. During his wife's trial, Martha Corey, we hear lines from actual court transcripts. I am innocent to a witch. I know not what a witch is. If you know not what a witch is, how do you know you are not one? This was actually stated during Bridget Bishop's trial, as was the use of a poppet, which we see Elizabeth Proctor being accused of in the film. Another line from the court transcripts is used when the accusing girls turn on one of their own, Mary Warren. Why do you come, Yellowbird? 
But you cannot want to tear my face! This actually happened during Martha Corey's trial. However, Mary Warren was indeed accused and was an accuser herself. The accusers were indeed mostly made up of young girls, with our main accuser here, Abigail Williams, actually only being 11 or 12 at the time, not the age we see in the film, where we also hear her accuse the clergyman's wife. I believe she be Reverend John Hale's wife, sir. This apparently changed the real world John Hale's opinion on the trials and she was never arrested, the trials ending shortly after. This John Hale is sympathetic to the accused's plight, even though he was initially brought in to investigate the accusations. He brings with him several books, one titled The Mysteries of Witchcraft, published in 1617. This is actually a real book by Thomas Cooper. The Reverend later refers to another book. Here is all the invisible world. In these books, the devil stands stripped of all his brute disguises. Here are all your familiar spirits, your incubi and succubi. Your witches that go by land, by air and by sea. This, of course, could be referring to the Malleus Maleficarum, which indeed covers all these topics and was a handbook for witch hunters. Speaking of books, the Devil's Book apparently played a big part in the naming of others during the trials. And Osborn writing her name in his book with her own red blood! This book was believed to be how witches signed their pact in blood with the devil. This was actually a common theme through the Salem trials, with judges urging the accused to name others whose names were signed in the book in order to save themselves. As well as this adaptation, The Crucible was also adapted for film in 1957, 1967, and again as mentioned in 1981. This film scores for history, and I was surprised at how much they actually took from the actual transcripts and the fact that they used theories that potentially could have fueled these Salem trials, such as land ownership and property rights which would have been transferred to others should the accused be sent to the gallows. Let me know what you thought of this film in the comments below, as well as any other witchy recommendations for my upcoming witch lore reviews. If you liked this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up and share it with anyone who you think might like it. And remember to hit that subscribe button to stay notified of new content. And as always, thank you very much for watching here on Witch Way.